for today's show. Jonathan Richmond. Hi, everybody. That's Tommy Larkins on the drums. And Jonathan and Tommy will be with us for the next uh, a little little under an hour. Or so. Oh my God, that long? We're gonna bore everybody to death. Everybody better ask real wild questions then. <laughs> well, yes, that is that is the thing. Today is a uh, Pester Jonathan. Pester Jonathan Day here at WREW. And uh, in case you don't know what our phone number is, it is two one six three six eight two two zero eight. If you have any questions that you would like to ask Jonathan Richmond. You are welcome to call in. Uh, Depending on how many we get, uh, someone in the other studio is going to be screening them. And uh, which doesn't mean all the questions have to be polite. Like uh, some of them, it's okay to ask nice questions. But uh, maybe ask if you're curious. Ask questions that might be a little, uh, might take a little bit of nerve and stuff. And you don't think like an old man like me is going to want to answer. Try me. I just might answer them. So what well, we do have one question that came through uh, by via text message actually well not text but through uh, the online request system on our website yeah so uh, someone from the UK who I guess can't call into the US for whatever reason all you know, those kind of reasons yeah but he uh, he wants to know uh, yes. when can we see you touring the UK again um the truth is I don't know that's just as simple as that I have no plans yet to go overseas. So um, thank you for the interest, but I don't know. Okay. Well, it looks like like we did get a call coming in, so I'm just waiting for it to show up on the little telephone thing for me to put that through. So at least we are are getting callers, even though it is technically eight minutes before we told people to start. Yeah, and if people don't call, we'll just play a bunch of gunk, so everything will work out great no matter what. Well, I can always I can ask you questions and, uh, too. You can ask questions too. Yeah, which Lily can I, ask questions. I think I'll I'll start off by asking you one now. Um, okay. You you sing a lot of songs in a lot of different languages. Yes. Do you have a favorite language to perform in? Good question. Um, Lily's referring to like some of our songs. If they're not in English, sometimes they can be in some of the languages. Like me and Tommy, uh, Tommy the drummer over here, we've t- traveled a lot. Um, I sing some in Italian, some Spanish, some French. And um, some little other, other things too, Ojibwe, Hebrew, like uh, just whatever Arabic, little bits in here, Tachet al Nujum, Raksa fi al Hawa, Raksa Marlich to dance with the wind. Uh, so, and the reason is just because the different emotions come out in the different cadences of the languages. It looks like we, we've got a question that we can put through now, so okay. I'm going to try and okay. do this. Up, oh, or wait Uh-oh, a minute. They chickened out. Uh-oh. I don't know. Uh, they all have the X showing up on them, so I don't know that I can put them through. But I'm making background. Are there any languages that you have not performed songs in that you would like to in the future? Look, um, is it? Let's see, because I like it when everything is surprising, even. Um, I didn't know I was going to check out Ojibwe in, in, until, uh, until me and, like, we were on this tour, and actually it was another time when I had to go to this Birch Bark Books in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which has all kinds of learning aids for mm-hmm. learning Ojibwe, and I figured, um... We'll check it out. And it turns out to be real musical for a lot of the stuff we're doing. Like, party, party, come to our outdoor style. Party, nagamo, nagamo, to sing. Nimi win, to dance. Onishishin, onishishin means that's not bad. Ambe, the ishan. And I yawn, that means, come to our house tonight, come to our house tonight. Ja shagawak, wa ago shag, in in shibag, different animals at the party. Kiwa abandana, kiwa abandana, oh, kanawa baman, we all see them. And I like that. So the different languages give a different vibe to the song, then that's why. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna see. If, I don't know what's going on with these calls. I'm gonna see if I can put one of them on. Yeah. No. Is everything working okay? Are we coming out? Well, they air? were working okay, but now they're all showing up as uh, X's. So oh, I don't know. Oh, because maybe they got sick of us. Well, no, that means they're. It means they're still there, but it means they're. We up, shouldn't have played up. anything. Here's our person from. Uh-oh. They should be. They're all on hold right now. Here's a list of them. They are. They are all showing up as uh, as X's in my That's studio, a, though. Can you still? I think you can still select them to put them through. No, I don't know why. Oh, they well. they were showing up fine before, but okay. I don't know what happened. But maybe we should. I don't know. I'm trying to put them on, but they are. They're X's. They're X's. They weren't X's before. They were showing up fine before until there were three of them, but they all... Maybe we need They're to... They're talking technical stuff, <laughs> folks. Maybe we need to, like, drop them and have them call in again and... This is Jonathan and Tommy here. Everything's great here at the station. <laughs> you mean white background conga music? Yeah. Jonathan and Tommy here. We're waiting for... Like, they're doing pushing buttons and stuff, and pretty soon they're going to have questions for us. your headphones on. Okay, I gotta the, put on headphones on. Don't go away, everybody. Uh-oh. Up. We're high tech. All right. Uh-oh. Hello. I'm hearing, I'm hearing a dial tone. That might not be good. Yeah, they've had enough. Your call cannot be completed. Pick another one. Pick your directory and call again. No. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Strange things are happy to get the station, but don't give up, everybody. It's gonna be exciting with phone calls and everything. You know what? We might have to, like, we might have to just try up, up. Okay, let's see. Hello, you are on air on WRUW. Can you hear us? Hi, I can hear you. I don't hear myself on air though. Uh oh. Well, it's uh, it's a little confusing, but hopefully. Hi, I all... hear him. I hear him. Okay, Jonathan can hear oh you. God. That's the important thing. That's that's all that matters to me. Hi, what you what what's cooking? Well, I just wanted to quickly say I've seen you twice this year, and they were the best experiences of my life this year. So thank you so much for touring. Thank you so much for putting out the music. I'm glad we could give you that much. Thank you. <laughs> and my question is actually inspired by a friend of mine uh, wrote you a letter in 1988 and asked you what music inspired you and what you were listening to. Yeah. And you wrote him back a very kind letter, handwritten letter, telling him what you were listening to both when you started out and how it evolved. Yeah. And uh, as, as knowing that there's nobody that sounds like you right now, I'm very interested in knowing, is there anything new that you're listening to? Uh, I'd love to hear your, what are you listening to now that I might be missing? Okay. Since then, I've started listening to a lot of Hindustani music. Um, friends of mine got me into it. Um, I started just looking for call and response, different kind of ways to just do call and response with our audience just in English. But then I discovered all this great call and response in um, Hindustani devotional music like Kirtan, which is call and response. And I started uh, learning. The more I learned about it, the more the drone of it all. I said, this is for me. So I've been listening to uh, uh, singers with names like Pandit Pran Nath, who passed away in the mid-1990s. Um, uh, Giri Devi, many, many names in uh, uh, music of uh, India over the past 50 years, um, and, and things like that. And let me see, a, a lot of Spanish music, a lot, you know, reggaeton, we've been listening to reggaeton, you know, that pop music, you know, like, uh, anyway, we've been listening to a fair amount of reggaeton, reggaeton, a mi me gusta el reggaeton. Mira que me queda no sabiendo Por la ciencia trascendiendo reggaeton Right off the radio, stuff like that Lots of stuff though, but that's a start That's a great start, thank you so much The Indian has definitely come out One of the first time we saw you this year 
there's a sitar on, on stage playing some of your new stuff. Yeah, playing the drone. Right? Yeah, Nicole Montalbano yeah. playing the drone on a few songs. Yes, so that influence has changed things. Um, I still listen to old rhythm and blues or early, um, uh, um, all kinds of things still. M- many things, almost too much to mention. But the music from Italy, music, um, like I say, um, a lot of old music from 20s and 30s in the United States, almost anything can inspire us. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I'll give somebody else a chance. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. Okay, let's put somebody else on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Can you hear us? You're on WRUW. Yeah. Jonathan Richmond. Hello, Jonathan here. Hi, how you doing? I'm great, Jonathan. Happy Halloween. Thank you. Thank you. Coming right up. Yes. Uh, well, I've been a fan of yours for over 50 years, probably. Thank you. But I, what I, my, I'm, I'm from Cleveland, but not there now. Yeah. But what I'm curious about is what your thought is about the uh, impact the Cleveland arts culture has had on progressive music over the last 50 years, and more specifically, how does it relate to you? Okay, can you be more specific about which, uh, do you mean music, do you mean uh, like visual arts, or all of the above? No, all of the above, but more specifically as it pertains to you, music. Okay, Um, how about Albert Eiler, who was uh, played, I think he was from an, perhaps another town, but played in Cleveland as a younger man. Um, I'm a big Albert Eiler fan. Um, I believe he ha- I, he was from Ohio, and I think he played a fair amount of his time in Cleveland. Is is that does that make sense to you? I think. Yeah. Okay, Albert Eiler, I would say, would be the biggest thing that affected me, uh, that I can, th- th- or at least it's the first thing that comes to mind. Although I'll bet if I had a little more time. Like, you know, well, anyway, that's the first one that comes to mind. Um, how, how, has, how has Cleveland helped you in your career? Th- all the cities helped. Cleveland helped us last night in our career because it was a great show with a wonderful audience. Probably the best. I missed it. Yeah, well, yeah. You'll, well we covered for you, but you'll, you'll, you'll be there next time, of course. <laughs> so, of course. A- anyway, um, Cleveland helps by being a, another great city that we can play throughout the Midwestern United States, which is really, I think, you know what? You, you've got this great co-op happening here that inspires me. I believe it's called the Evergreen Co-op. It's a, it does laundry for some of the hospitals, and it's a whole new business model. I think there are things in Cleveland that are inspiring. Um, but one of the most inspiring things about Cleveland to me, I hope I'm getting the name right of this co-op. Anyway, it's based on a model that they have in Burgos, Spain, a giant, uh, not in, Bur- I'm sorry, um, Mondragon, Spain. There's a gigantic 90,000 person co op there um, that not just has different retail things, but it has a sort of a central uh, committee, which, it, let's say, uh, the textile part of their co op isn't doing great that month. They'll take a worker, instead of them being out of a job, they'll transfer them to their shoe department for six months. So people, it's, this whole new kind of way of um, employee-owned stuff being efficient and friendly to it themselves. <laughs> so, and you have one here, right? Have you heard of that co-op I'm talking about? I haven't, no. Has anyone at the station? Do you know what I'm talking about, Lily? No, I haven't heard of that co-op. Check them out. I'll look, they I'll ra- look them They up made now. a book. In fact, um, Blue Hour Records is out in the, uh, wait, in, in the waiting room there. Talk with them because they'll know... Um, the name of this book, uh, it's a whole other way, and it's inspiring in different other states in the country. They're copying this Cleveland model. So this Cleveland model is already becoming inspirational to other states. Check them out. Hmm. It seems like they're really open-minded, really different, and they already have a flourishing um, arm of it. It works for some of the health institutions here in Cleveland right now. I mean, it's doing really well, and it and it's got really great hiring practices and uh, really free of old social baggage. So check it out. I'll have to look them up. Yeah. We have we have two other callers waiting, let's hear so em. I think we may have to. Okay, okay let's go. Thank you, Jonathan. Yep. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Hello. Hello, Jonathan here. Hi. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. This is Tim uh, from Cincinnati. I, Hi. I just want to uh, 
I, I've, I've seen you probably since the late 90s. Every Cincinnati show has come, and uh, I've just enjoyed every show. Great. I'd like um, to get back there. We did, it didn't work out on this tour, but we'd like to go back. Anyway, go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, that, that, was, uh, I was, that was part of my question. I, I, I was thinking, um, I, I always keep it, you know, a, a track of what your, your, your tour schedule is. Yeah. Blue Arrow, and I, and I I haven't seen you in Cincinnati, I think, since the last time was um, uh, Southgate House Revival. And I, yep. I just, no, it actually was at Ludlow Garage. Ludlow Garage. Yes. I loved that. Those, that was a great audience there in a beautiful s- sweater shop right down the street that sells <laughs> wool sweaters that are really cool. Anyway, we had a great time there. Um, the, the way these tours work, especially since the recent pandemic, everything is sort of topsy-turvy. Some places that were happening before aren't now. New places are springing up, which is a long way of saying, we'll get to everywhere eventually. <laughs> you know, I, I, I had a chance, my wife and I came to the Ludlow show, and I, I, I don't remember this, but I, I we, we were exiting, and we, we, we spoke with you briefly, and I, I, told, I wanted to tell you again, it was just probably the 30 most delightful 30 seconds i had that year it was right after the pandemic and uh no no it was before you know, before the pandemic yep. before the pandemic yeah right? and and we had t- we were talking about uh, how much i loved that uh, the album uh, but I, I loved especially and do no other thing and i i guess my question is yes when when you i know the lyrics you you, you are inspired by poetry but d- when you when you wrote the music to that song or, or you, 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 when you play that do, do the lyrics with that particular song? Do the lyrics or do they impact the way uh, the, the different chord variation? It seems such a such a hopeful, happy song, and I love how it picks up and um, you know that with the with the heart, you know, and and do you know they're saying it. Do, yes. do the lyrics impact your, your music? Good question. In fact, um, in my case, the lyrics are the music. With me. I just sing the words, and the melodies happen by themselves. So that's how it works. Like, um, okay. In fact, in that song, like every other song, I don't even... So, like, the melodies change, like, and the chords are part of the arrangement. To me, the, the, a song is the melody, and the guitar is there or is not there, but it's not part of the song. It is said that a good song is, uh, is you can tell, because it's sounds good just with voice and guitar. I would disagree. To me, a really good song just sounds good with voice. And the guitar is there to just, yeah, well, la da da to accompany. But to me, the melody is the song. And so, and the melody happens in my case, usually just because I sing, well, I burned in the heat of the summers of heartbreak. I don't plan it. It's just how it comes out. That's how it is. And it could change. Um, The next time I did it, I could go, well, I burned in the heat of the songs of heartbreak. It all depends on how I feel. So that's well, I, 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 that. That's uh, such a, a wonderful song, and I, I, I it just, uh, I tell you, it's, it's been uh, just a wonderful, uh, <laughs> wonderful ride since I've discovered your music, probably since college. Uh, I just want to. I, I want to thank you, and um, I love some of the music you've turned me on to. The Dirty Three. I the Dirty them. Three. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I hadn't heard of them until you, until you referenced them, and then I, then I turned on to uh, Zyloris White. Yep. That, that, They're all and, great. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean great. to cut you off. It's just that we better run because yeah, we've got about wanna, 40. Other, we got all these calls. Yeah, we do. That, we do have a lot truly, of other callers. Truly, thank you. thank you for that great call. Thank you so much. Thank mm-hmm. you. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Okay, Hi. Get another caller. Welcome. Hi, Jonathan here. Hello. Hey, Jonathan. Hi. Jeff from Cleveland. How are you? Great. And yourself? Fantastic. I'll right. tell you what. Um, right. I was at the show last night, and it was amazing, as Thank always. you. Thank and you. And I always leave your shows with a big smile on my That's face. That's what we like. Yeah. So I have a two-part question. Let's hear. Um, David Bowie covered... Pablo Picasso many uh-huh. years ago. Yes, he did. So I was wondering, I was wondering what you thought of that version. Uh-huh. And my second part of the question is, did you ever get to meet David? Um, I met him briefly. The whole my whole band did. 
Our drummer, David Robinson, was a big David Bowie fan, and he arranged for the rest okay. of us to get um, good seats at the first time David Bowie and his Spider from Mars band came over. And uh, we all met him briefly after the show. He came down and shook hands, and, uh, and that was it as far as meeting him. But that version of the song, I, what I liked is that he did what I like people to do with my songs, which is not do them how I do them, but do them how they do them. So I love the beginning. His beginning makes me laugh and laugh, the way he arranged it, you know, like he did this um, Spanish motif, which I thought was really funny and really inventive. So, yeah, I, I uh, give him marks for creativity, so, but I never got to meet him. In fact, um, I would have enjoyed probably um, talking to him, but no, I never did get a chance to really talk to him. But thank you so much for okay. the question. Yeah. Oh, and one other thing, Jonathan. Yes. I, as someone who I, I play drums and percussion and a few other yeah. instruments, and I got to tell you, I learned something new yesterday when I saw it. When you you grab that that tube that had what looked like a string hanging out of it, yeah. and I'm like, what strings they got there? When you shook that, it made that crazy sound. That's right. And it bugged me so much, I had to look it up last night and find out what that was called. I don't even and know I, what it's I called. Understand it's, yeah. I guess it's called a spring drum or a thunder tube. No so. idea. <laughs> but anyway, but. I, I, Glad I you thought it was like, extremely cool. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. and I'll see you next time. Great. Beautiful. Hi. Hello, Jonathan here. Hi. With Tommy Larkins on Hi. drums. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Is it me now? Is this... We're ready. Go. Cool. This is Jacob. Hi, um, Jacob. My question, my question is about um, guitars, and you've had, you know, 50, 60 year plus uh, life with guitars, with yes. playing guitars, uh, and my question is, you know, through the years, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your favorite guitars, like whether it's Stratocaster, Jazzmaster, Epiphone, Emperor, uh, or the, the guitar you're playing now, and sort of, uh, you know, tell us about those, and, and what took you from, from one guitar to another. Okay, and I will, yes. Also, which ones, which ones do you still own? Okay, great. I've got a few classical guitars and a few flamenco guitars around the house, and one um, Greco brand electric guitar for effects, um, which I don't like. Uh, when we play live, though, I use like this. You're hearing a flamenco guitar now. Because I like that percussion and that. Is there, a, is there a brand for that, or is it just. Yeah, no, this is from Spain. This was made by a maker named Aritza like back about in the late 70s. And I got uh, another flamenco guitar, and I got a couple of uh, Ramirez classical guitars, and, which are, have, give you a little more harp tone. This, but this has some itself. Like, so I like the flamenco guitars because they're real transparent and light and thin sounding. And the classical guitars are a little more harp-like even than these are. So I like them both. And those are what I... I uh, use when me and Tommy play live. And I started, of course, as an electric player. And the Fender Stratocaster is almost the electric guitar version of a flamenco guitar because it's thin and twangy. A Telecaster is sort of like that, except it's a little more, a little more um, kind of what is squawky. The Telecaster is squawk more, usually. I must say, before we go any further, that it all depends on the particular guitar. So, because um, every guitar sounds a little different, but so my joy is to go into a music store and try stuff out. Just like when I was 19 or 20, they still have to kick me out. Jonathan, we're closing the store now. I go, okay, just another few minutes. So some things don't change. And um, I've played big Gibson arch tops, which also sound good. I like them all. I've had, I can't, it's hard to say favorite, but... I guess the way to tell you is what I own now. I own a few classicals, a few flamenco guitars, and, an, and a single-coil pickup electric, which is hollow body, to give you that kind of, uh, you know, anyway, kind of rough sound. And thank you for the question. Thank well, you thank, for calling. Thank you for answering. Sure. All right on. Okay, bye. Let's see who else is on. Hello, Jonathan here with Tommy Larkins on a drum back there. Hi. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. My name is Dave, and uh, I have been playing a uh, Fender Stratocaster for 20 years. Yes. And 
And the other night, sadly, for the first time in its long life, I dropped it, and it put sort of a horrible crack in it. And I was just wondering if you could say a couple of kind words to my guitar. I've got it here with me, and could you just get it back on its feet again? Yeah, I could. Where's the Where's the crack in the guitar? Where? It's on the bottom of the guitar, kind of like on the rim of the body, and it kind of cracked it all through there. Yeah, but the good thing is Stratocasters and Telecasters are almost as strong as, as if they were a battleship. So you could probably... That's great news. Yeah, you could... Um, I mean, have you played it? Does it still play? It's, it still plays. Its feelings are just hurt, essentially. Oh, I, I, then I can help the situation. First, chin up, chin up, young man, because it's going to be all right, Fender's are made as tough as if they were like aircraft carriers. <laughs> Their feelings could be hurt a little, but they're tough old guitars and they're made to be treated rough. They're veterans of many, many a barroom brawl <laughs> all over the world. So um, so enjoy. So how will I help you with the guitar? Think the guitar, tell the guitar, well, you had a rough night the other night, but you're tough, you're Fender guitar, and I'm happy to play you, so everything's going to be great. And Uncle Jonathan says it's all going to be all right, so it's going to be all right. How about that? Uh, things are already just doing so much better. Thank Good. You. So hug your guitar for me, and we'll talk next time. I will do it. Thanks, Jonathan. Sure. Glad, glad to be of help. Okay. Welcome. Next show. Next. Hello, Jonathan here to answer your questions, also featuring Tommy Larkins on the drum. <laughs> Hello to Jonathan and hello to Tommy. He says hello. Um, to we were fortunate enough to see your show in Northampton. Northampton, day, yes. Great, and I just I wanted to ask because there's so many of your songs that no matter how many times I hear them, yeah, they still have the original spark and they change meaning over time. But yeah, I'm they do. I've noticed that. About them. Yeah. Um, in especially, we had to move from Boston years ago, and we're even listening to Twilight in Boston the other night, just kind of remembering those areas as you go through them, and it yes. means a lot to us. Thank you. But I'm wondering, what songs do you listen to that still have that excitement? Uh, by other people, you? or my own, or how yeah. do you mean? Uh, by other, or, I listen, um, oh, go on, sorry, I'm, I interrupted, go on. Just um, things that you're a fan of. of okay, I'm a big fan of the Italian singer Domenico Modugno, who's the guy who wrote Volare. Penso che un sogno così non ritorna mai più. Mi dipingevo la mani alla faccia di blu. Poi d'improvviso venivo vol dal vento rapito e cominciavo a volare nel cielo infinito. Volare, etc., etc. Anyway, he's my idea of a terrific poet. He wrote songs in Sicilian dialect. He wrote uh, volare, um, which is not like the American, the American hit song called Volare, which I think Dean Martin had a hit with, is not the same song. It's not a translation. It's a whole different song. The Italian one had this whole kind of wild poetry in it. Nothing at all to do with the American subject matter. Not a thing. Um, I'm a big fan of his. I'm a big fan of... Um, a lot of the Spanish guitar players, Raimundo Amador <laughs> being one of my favorite um, guitar players in the world. Um, I listen to Paulinho, the conga drummer, when he plays with Jose Feliciano. Jose Feliciano, a fabulous singer and an amazing guitar player. His early stuff with just voice guitar. If you haven't heard Jose Feliciano's early stuff, when he was just singing as a, in it, around 20 years old, singing, playing guitar, and with a conga drummer and a bass player, hear it. It's totally different material with a whole different vibe. I'm still a fan. I'm a fan of music from India a lot. It's when I go to a music a record store, I'll look for stuff from India, stuff from Africa, from Mali. Big fan of music from Mali. Big fan of Arabic groove music, like that they would play in discos at 4 a.m. and stuff like that and, and things like that. Um, almost too much to mention, but does that start to answer your question? Absolutely. It's a great starting point for another journey of music. Yeah, and I wish we could talk longer, but next time I'll think up more stuff. I must run Thanks, along, Jonathan. but thank you so much for the call. I just want to let you know real fast before we put the next caller on. Yeah. Apparently we have 165 people listening online 
from the U.S. right now, 11 wow. from the U.K., four from Canada, three from Spain, two from Italy. We've got people from the Netherlands, Switzerland, Ireland, Japan, Latvia, Morocco, Portugal, Romania, and Thailand. What a beautiful world. All Look, listening right now. This is very strange. I don't even have a computer myself. I don't know how to run one and don't want to find out. But I must admit to being fascinated by the way people can instantaneously communicate in this particular era. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we, do have, we have two other callers on here. Which Let's you go. Want to put one of them on? Let's go. Okay. You're on WRUW with Jonathan Richmond. Hello. Jonathan here. Hey, uh, this is Connor. I saw you in Brooklyn a couple weeks ago. Wasn't that fun? Did you see the first show or the second show? I saw the first show. It was amazing. It Thank was you. one of the best live shows I've seen maybe ever, I have to say. Yeah, that was a real good night for us, too. Everything was, see, we don't use a set list, so everything, some nights flow better than others, and that one, everything was right there. So good, good, good. glad you liked it. Yeah, it was perfect. I was actually going to ask about that, you know, not using a set list and also kind of doing new adaptations of some of your old material. I was wondering, like, how much of that is planned before, or do you kind of come up with a lot of that stuff on the spot and why you chose uh, to do new versions or even play the old songs at all? Perfect, perfect question. I intentionally don't know what we're going to do, like, but it doesn't mean I don't study in the dressing room beforehand. In fact, there were two nights in Brooklyn. You were there when I was um, at like took all my time, took hours in the dressing room thinking up ideas for songs as I usually do. The second night, I was hungry and I got some ramen at a ramen place and it upset my schedule a little. So the second night had different other kind of moments, but it was a completely different atmosphere and it didn't flow quite the way the first night did. I don't remember what I did either night and don't want to remember any more than I want to know what I'm going to do tonight. I don't want to know... But it doesn't mean, um, so as far as old songs and new, it's all a mystery to me. I just, I think, I stay there before a show and think up, sort of get quiet and think of how I feel. So that, and, mm -hmm. and might do songs that I'm thinking of then and then might totally not do any of them. But as far as <laughs> new versions of old songs, they're all supposed to be new versions, no matter what they are. Because they were all supposed yeah, to be totally. based on feeling. And I learned that from the Velvet Underground. Um, that's one of the main things I learned from them as a teenager. They were a group who would improvise. And when you heard songs like Sister Ray, it was, I never heard it the same way twice. And that's, they were the ones who taught me to play. <laughs> Good no, question. That's amazing that you're really tapping into something there. Yeah, and they did too. I was, I had... They were my teachers. They were. That's what I thought music was, is improvising. That's what I thought it was, you know. So that's that's what I do. That's what I learned. Thanks for coming. Unfortunately, we've got a whole lot of uh, questions. But thank still, you so yeah. much. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. We do have a couple questions that came in online real fast. Let's hear them. Uh, it's an online question from Tom. He says, I saw Jonathan in Brooklyn and loved the show. What did he and Tommy do for fun in New York City, and does he have a favorite record store? Do we have a favorite record store in New York? Like, we just discover stuff. Um, you never know. Like, it's, the whole place is really in, inspiring that way because you go down some little street. We hung out in Brooklyn with friends of ours. There's a wonderful photographer who takes pictures for our, a lot of the stuff we do. Um, her name is Drieli, and we hung with her and um, with Jake, our pal from California. Um, what else do we do for fun in Brooklyn that we can talk about Eat. over the radio? <laughs> so, <laughs> we ate a lot of food. We ate a lot of food, great food. I uh, just enjoyed. Well, you know what was the most fun for me? Just to silently walk down the street in the afternoon and feel the vibes of uh, a city that big and that cosmopolitan. I would say that would be number, the num number one. Okay, let's uh, let's put another caller on. I, I don't know if you're going to get to perform or not. We've got so many people calling. We'll just do whatever happens. Okay. Okay, hello, Jonathan here with Tommy. Hi. Oh, hi. This is 
Hi, this is Martin. Hi, Martin. Uh, I'll start with a question. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite, like, early electric blues artist? Ooh, John Lee Hooker is my for who started, like, in the his late forties stuff. Um, the, um, I would say the first one that comes to mind is John Lee Hooker. There are many others, okay. but he's far and away that drone he got. And also, he improvised, too. Like, we were just talking about improvisation um, mm-hmm. and how I learned about stuff from the Velvet Underground. Velvet Underground. Well, you know who they were fans of? Yeah, well, People yeah. like John Lee Hooker and Lightning Hopkins. In fact, they learned improvisation from them. Uh, and they say so and things. Uh, the, uh, there's a song called The Gift that the Velvet Underground used to do. You know what their title in the band for it was? John Lee Hooker. No. John Le- oh, um, really? oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm wrong. That one was one that they called Booker T in the MG. The riff, like, you know. That was sort of like a Booker T in the MG. But um, uh-huh. th- um, one of their ones on their first album, their title for it was John Lee Hooker, which is a long way of telling you that they were, um, they were also fans of that and the improvisation of it. John Lee Hooker uh-huh. kills me, not just his guitar, but his voice. Um, anyway, so uh, there are many others, but that's the one that first one that comes to mind. So I better leave it there okay. for now because we've got 100 other callers. Uh, okay, well, then let me just make a, a quick comment. Yes, thank you. One year on the greatest radio show all week on the All station. right. Oh, well, I like it. Then, I believe it. Thank uh, you. Yes, and then two, I've never, I've heard your name. I've never followed your music or anything but just hearing what you had to say about Albert Eiler and getting kicked out of music stores and yeah. different guitars and sounds makes me know that your music and me are going to be best friends and I'm going to be listening for it. Really sweet of you to say, sir, and thank you so much. And yeah, we'll talk I, another time. I don't usually get music by this method, but I know it's going to work. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. Bye. Hello, welcome. Jonathan Richmond here talking to you. Hi. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Really great, because I'm here with Tommy and here with Lily at the desk, and we're having a good time. So, what's cooking? Fantastic. I was just curious. My name's uh, Justin. I'm calling from here in, in Boston. Yeah. And uh, I was curious what the studio is like for you, like... Um, what the studio environment is, because I've noticed that, you know, you do multiple versions of songs over the years. Yes. uh, Whether the goal for you is ever to try to capture it perfectly in the studio as like a a finished product, or if that's ever been the goal. Beautiful. You're always just trying to capture an honest performance in the the moment. The second one, and that's a really, thank you for that great comment question, because, so the answer is, one of the reasons we'll do the same song and revisit it, the same song on another record, is because I think there is no perfect version. They're always changing. And it's, in fact, that's what the idea is, is to, to be in the moment and just feel how you feel right then. Like, um, so good question. So the answer is the second one, definitely. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just love listening. It's just, it feels like when I hear the same song revisited, it makes it feel bigger than the song itself it feels like a whole idea or a feeling that you're just trying to re yep. revisit it it's right it's about a feeling to rev- you got it and thank you so much for your call thank you thank you so much yep okay we got to do a, a quick legal id here for the station you are listening to wruw fm 91.1 cleveland broadcasting from the campus of case western reserve university we have jonathan richmond with us here in yeah. the studio and lots of people are still calling in so let's talk Okay, let's... Because it's time for Pester Jonathan. Pester Jonathan. Well, it's a very popular proposition, yeah. <laughs> it seems. Hello. Welcome. Jonathan here. Ready to be pestered. <laughs> Hello. Hello, am I on? Yep, you're on. Hi. Hello, Jonathan hi, here. Hi, Jonathan. My name is Matt, and I'm going to be at your show tonight at Kenyon College. Great. I'm saying... I am born and raised in Knox County, and it just means the world that you come through and play. We actually went out, uh, myself, friends, and you and Tommy, we went out to the Village Inn after your last performance there. Yep, I love playing there. Yes. 
<laughs> my question was, I know um, you had to cancel some Bonnie Prince Billy shows and yes. Cleveland and everything. Uh-huh. Um, I, I would love to say, like, hello after the show, but I don't know how you're feeling with, like, meeting fans and stuff with COVID. I just kind of wanted to touch base out of respect. Thank you. Very thoughtful question. Um, I keep my distance. Sometimes I wear a mask when I feel, my, when my gut tells me that it's getting a little close. Um, I don't, what I'm mainly careful about is like people nowadays like to take selfies. You've heard of them perhaps? Yes. So, okay. So I'm kind of, I either wear a mask or I keep my distance. I got a way of staying. So I'm not too fearful, but on the other hand, we got a lot of shows to play and we can't cancel them. So, I mean, we don't want to. <laughs> and so I'm a little yes. cautious. And so um, so the main thing I, is I usually come out and say like at a, at a smaller place, it's easier. At a bigger place, I got to keep my distance. But when there's just about 50 people or something, usually it all works out fine just by itself. It just does. Yeah, I just wanted to be respectful because, you know, COVID was canceling shows and left and right. And yeah. the only thing I had to get me through is I loved your uh, spark from Journey in the Dark. Thank you. And also that performance you did with Andrew Bird just meant the world to me. You are two of my favorite musicians, and I've been listening to Maurice Ravel ever since that performance. Thank you. Andrew was a prince. We've become friends since then. And it was wonderful and glad you liked it. And uh, before I go on to the next call, I want to thank you much for your nice thoughts. Mm. Excellent. I'll see you tonight, Jonathan. Thank you. Hello, Jonathan here, ready to talk to you. Hi. Hello. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Hey, how are you? Uh, Great. My name's Brad. Hi, Brad. I'm calling from Boston. Yeah. I grew up. I grew up in Vermont, so I used to see you all the time at Club Metronome. Yeah. I I really appreciate that you would come up there and play so often when I lived up there. But great. I've since moved to Boston, and I'm curious. I'm sure you're. I know you're aware of this. But I'm wondering about your current perspective on sort of the embracing of Massachusetts of the song Roadrunner. Uh huh. Sort of like a, touch, a sort of a touchstone, and you know the attempt to make it the state rock song. And there's a, a new venue that opened up this year, actually called Roadrunner, and it has. I'm in love with Massachusetts and big neon sign. In oh, one nice. Of and, I hadn't so heard I'm of that. About, yeah, it's great. It's a great place. Okay. Uh, I, I think... I'm, I'm curious about your perspective on all that. Yeah. And, and what you think about it. First of all, um, I'm very honored that people are giving uh, something such consideration. I love Massachusetts. I love New England. Um, I also think that there are other songs that could that a lot of people have heard simply in numbers far more than that. Uh, they're all good choices. I mainly right. just feel um, that, uh, you know, that particular piece was different every time when I used to do it way back. And it was about really about loneliness. <laughs> and uh, I'm really glad that uh, people got that much out of it. And that's what I think. Okay, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. And thanks for everything. Sure. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello. You're on with me, Jonathan. May I help you? <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Uh, this is Jonathan. Hi. I'm calling you from Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, um, all right. And I'll keep the praises brief, but I just want to tell you that, that I love you. I love your music. Um, you've, you've been such an important influence in my life. Um, How nice of you. Thank you. And I, just your joy and your openness and your curiosity is an inspiration. So thank you so much. Thank um, you. I want to ask you, what what are some of your earliest memories of music? Do I'll you tell remember, you. Like, the first time you, you encountered something yes. and it struck your ear and inspired you. Yes. My first one that I remember was being um, either in a car, I think I was, with my with parents, or I was at... We were at some family event, and I was two or three years old, and I heard um, this music. I think it was Carmen by Bizet. Um, and I like, dum dum da dum dum da 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 the teachers decided to have a fashion show with eight-year-old fashion models, and so I had to wear a, a Madras sport coat, <laughs> and everyone had to wear something uncomfortable. And in the background was 
this. That piece, the theme from Moulin Rouge, played by a violin quartet, I think it was, or the orchestra, I think it was, um, anyway, and I was eight years old, and I heard that, and it stopped me dead, and um, and I asked my mom later, what was that? And she said, that's the theme from the movie Moulin Rouge, and that's one of my earliest musical memories, and I, it's one of my favorite pieces still, so those are two. Nice. Um, now, did you try to inspire your children's musical tastes, or how did you do that? Or Good question. Did you try to steer them in different directions or let uh, them discover it on their own? More. Let the, um, I just played stuff around the house all the time, and if they were interested, I, I was happy, but I didn't care. I expected them to have different musical tastes. That's part of the deal <laughs> with children. So, um, yeah. so in it's a it's a mixed thing. So I wasn't I didn't need I didn't really I do try and steer if, if people haven't heard enough music from say um, um, Mexico or Spain or um, France I probably played them a lot of stuff like that they wouldn't have heard. Um, right. Certainly they heard more Italian stuff than they would have heard with the no more normal dad. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I heard. I heard you mention earlier Molly, like some of the most beautiful music I've heard recently. Yeah, from Molly. Yeah, so, they, yeah so the kids kid growing up just heard whatever they heard, and there was lots of it. I didn't need to point them in any direction. <laughs> and Thanks. thank you. Thank you for calling. Okay, we do have, we have a question here that came in online okay. uh, for Jonathan and for Tommy. Yeah. Uh, what they do when music begins to bore them, what refreshes their spirit? Um, you want to go first? You go first. Okay. Music has yet to bore me, so I don't know what it would feel like. But um, when we don't do this, I build um, brick ovens, and I build garden walls out of stone, and uh, uh, that's what I do during the day in California when we're not on the road. Um, I'm in my work clothes, mixing mortar in a wheelbarrow, <laughs> and um, building things out of stone and brick and concrete block is what I do. It's my uh, other thing. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. We have another someone who can't call in because he's at work. Yeah. Um, but he says he would love it if you could share any recollections about recording uh, the Rock and Roll with the Modern Lovers record. Any thoughts on the circumstances under which and how it was recorded would be greatly appreciated. Okay. I, um, I told the people at the little record company that we were with that I wanted to do an all-acoustic record, but it had to be a live room. And it was recorded at CBS Studios, but it was actually recorded inside an echo chamber with a bit of baffling so that it would be the sound which was live enough. And so there were no overdubs on the record. It was all done live. And um, that's it. Okay, uh, I think we can probably put another caller. Let's do Okay, you're on WRUW with Jonathan Richmond. Hello. Hello, thank uh, you. You're welcome. My name's Tony. Hi, Tony. Jonathan, been a fan for many years. I've had a chance to see you perform in uh, Ohio and Texas, and you've always put on a great show, and thank you for the time you take to interact with the fans, and just uh, it's great to see people who are genuine in the world of music. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm not the only one, uh, <laughs> but thank you. Oh, I know, yeah. but I uh, just wanted to thank you. And a question I had for you is, as a young man, was there a genre of music or a performer that you didn't appreciate until much later in life, and you thought, man, what was I thinking? I really missed out on that. Yes, there were. Um, um, first of all, it took me, let me think of, because there was something that was just occurring to me recently, exactly that. Let me get it straight in my head. Um, sure. But anyway, the answer is so much that I didn't appreciate. How about the work of my keyboard player in The Modern Lovers, Jerry Harrison? <laughs> we have more in common now musically. He's played and helped produce the last two albums, Sa and um, the, the next one, Want to Visit My Inner House. I take a song that I... And then I give it to Jerry and see what he does on keyboards, and he'll take it a totally different place. 
So we actually have more. I actually appreciate his music now more than I did. I was too much a bossy little brat when I was 19. I said, no, play this. I don't want that complicated stuff. Don't do that. And I didn't know anything. But now that I know what a flat five is, <laughs> and I'll say, whoa, great call. So the first thing that comes to mind is, well, let's start close to home. Jerry Harrison, I appreciate his music much more now. We have more in common as players now than we did back when we were in the Modern Lovers together 50 years ago. Well, perfect. That's wonderful. Yeah. And thank you for calling. And, uh, oh, go on. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. More calls. More calls. Hello. Hello, welcome. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? Really good. And yourself? Good, thanks. My name is Cindy Hi. or Chewy. Hey, I'm friends with uh, Pete and Debbie over there. That All right. With you. Chewy. I was at the show last night. Yes. Um, I just wanted to tell you that I think you're absolutely rad and inspiring. And Tiamo. Uh, you get me through a lot of difficult days. Oh. And, uh, yeah, you're just, it was my first time seeing you. It was a dream come true. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, it was a great, great splendid night to um, sort of a hard day. For Good. A friend and, yeah. Um, but I wanted to know, like, ha, are you a morning person or a night owl? Both. I wake up early in the morning, and I get my musical ideas late at night. A lot of times I'll only sleep five or six hours at the night because I get up like six or seven, and um, a lot of times I'll just sit quietly for a while, and I sit quietly at night too, but in that sitting, a lot of times I get musical ideas, and sometimes even in the middle of the night, I'll wake up and make, and write down stuff that occurred to me. So I'm a morning and a night person. A lot of my favorite musical ideas come at two in the morning <laughs> so i'm both and i'm an afternoon okay. i'm an afternoon nap kind of person and for some reason Got when it. i'm building bread ovens i don't need the afternoon nap <laughs> <laughs> very good yeah i write poetry so i was sort of curious about a yeah. little bit of like yeah what you do as far as like writing like um i'm sort of sporadic more of a night out harder for me to get up early in the morning yeah i'm trying i get it yeah but with um, me it's both yeah, yeah. Okay. okay cool and one one more question yeah i just want to know if you were reading anything currently yes many things i wish i could think uh oh let me think um what did i bring on the road i brought tons of masonry yeah. notes um like okay. um irish stone walls by patrick mcafee <laughs> Lots of technical books on stonework and brickwork, but many, many other things. But um, that's all I can think of right now. And thank you for calling so much. Yeah. Cool. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. More questions. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Hi. You're on on air. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? We can hear. Yes. Oh, great. This is Lou. I'm so thankful to be able to speak with you. Um, I'm actually been 12 years at Cape to Western, so I'm, I'm kind of excited and heard about this camp. Great. Um, I'm in Philly. I'm in Philly now. I've seen you several times. Um, I'll come back sometime. Sure. You, you, top, you, you have one of the best shows ever I've ever seen. I see a lot of, a lot of musical shows. Thank you. And I try to tell everybody about you that I can. Um, and one of the, you know, songs that really, uh, you know, you know, touches base with me is, uh, you know, when we suffer. And, uh, did you say when we were, did you say when we refuse to suffer, that one? Exactly. Okay, yes. good. It's got both, both humor in it, but it also touches a kind of philosophical, you know, chord, I think, if people choose to listen to it. And um, I don't know if you feel that way about it, but I certainly do. And uh, I, I, the answer is I still love the song, um, I, but yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go on, go on. And, um, you know, certainly in a, in a world, there's always been suffering in a world, but uh, it's really kind of happened seemingly even more, more today than, than before and in more different ways. So just, you know, trying to think about, obviously, I imagine, like, through your songs, uh, like this one, uh, you, that's one of the ways you might try to with or, or, or manage through things like that. But just wondered if you have other 
uh, other ways that you might recommend, you know, similar to, to, to fight in that song. Okay, here's what I think. I don't, I don't manage. I don't try and struggle my way through things. I have fun. These songs, above all, are supposed to be fun. They're supposed to be, so it's not a way of managing and struggling through stuff because I'm one of those people who doesn't think things are worse now than they used to be because I know what, because I think of things like Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> I think of Herod. I think of, it was always rough. Um, it, it, so I don't think it was ever, I mean, human sacrifice by the hundreds of thousands. Um, I don't think it's, bad or good now, I just think it is what it is. And um, these songs are supposed to be, um, they're supposed to be, to be danced to more than they are anything. And I really am glad though they have a nice impact on you and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Yeah. I would totally agree with what you're saying. Thank and, you. Uh, also, one other little nod is, I don't know if you've listened or ever referenced him, but um, when I saw you in Philly back in, just before COVID, yeah. Really sense the James Brown that's going on in, in some of your songs that you just kind of migrate to, and I oh, to. outright theft. <laughs> yeah, I just like James Brown and his band have influenced us just like they've influenced almost every musician since yeah. they sort of rewrote the book on rhythm and blues. And <laughs> yes, of course, James Brown is there in us. Sometimes it's outright theft. <laughs> yes. Yes. So thank you for everything you've done. I uh, really hope to see you again in the film. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Yeah. Jonathan, how many more questions do you want to? Three. Three? Okay. Let's see. Well, we've got, we got two here right now. Let's so take them. We'll, we'll take one of these. Hello. Jonathan here. Hello. Hello. You're on air. Hey, Jonathan. Hi. It's Jeff Shoemaker. It's when you. I Tommy coming over here to help me rake these leaves. Okay. Um, but 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Like, uh, have your work clothes on and your work pants, and we'll be right over there. I've been at it for the last two days. I don't know how much more of this I can stand. Yeah, okay. So leave it to me and Tommy because you need some young blood in there. So we'll be out there. I brought my work boots with me. We'll be right there. Good. Well, I've got extra sets for everybody and gloves. Good. Listen, uh, do me a favor. It, it's wonderful to hear you. Call me when you yeah. get a chance, okay? Okay, very good. Call you soon, Jeff. Yeah. See you. Bye. Okay. That was Jeff Shoemaker. He wants help with his leaves over in Detroit. Okay. Okay, you're on air. Hi. Welcome. All right. Hi, uh, my name is James. Uh, pleasure to talk to you, Jonathan. Hi. So I was thinking, where do you find your sense of humor? The last time I saw you was at the Camel in Richmond. Yeah. Long, long, and you did a long rant about how you hate pastels. And the whole crowd was was kind of just eating it up because it's it's a color, but you really did not like pastels. And so it, it just kind of strikes me as they're laughing at you, but you're being very serious about this. Oh, yeah. So where do you find the line in your, in your sense of humor? That's a funny question because I thought I loved pastels. I love pastel robin's egg blue, which is a pastel. I love sky. Um, actually, there are certain pastels. I know what I don't like. There are some pastels that I don't like. I call them non-color pastels. The, that's probably what I meant. Like, uh, I won't mention their names because I don't want to be any unfair to any particular pastel. But there are some that I don't care for. Um, but yes, there are many pastels. And in combination, oh my God, pastel green and fire engine red, yes. Um, like robin's egg, blue and white, oh my God. So I would say it's a mixed bag with pastels. Uh, thank you oh. so much. Yes. Oh, thank you, John. I mean, it's been, it's been so long since I've, since I've seen you perform, and it, you really do. It, on a terrible day, everyone tells you. You just bring a smile to everyone's face. And I have a, a, a sister who lives in New York City, and she used to see you at the Bell House all the time. Bell House is a and great place. Did, the Bell House is a wonderful yeah. place. With all the people in the audience standing up and enjoying. Yes, I played with Tommy at the Bell House, and we played at another great place in Brooklyn. And good. We're just glad. Thank you for calling, and we're glad we can give oh, you, you and the people a good time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, this will be the last one. Last right one. Here. Last okay. one for today. We've we'll got to run. Folks, we got to run. We've got to play in Gambier later in the afternoon. we gotta, we got to go. So anyway, 
Thank you. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is Tara. Hi, Kara. Jonathan here. Hi. Hi, Jonathan. I've uh, got a bit of a special story. We okay. had a, uh, a daughter last year pass away at five years old. We're sorry. From a brain tumor. Yes. Yes, yes too. But her name was Lydia. Yes. I can tell you that we played your song for her a lot, and she loved it. Nice. Can you tell me where you were inspired, uh, who your Lydia was? Yes. It, it was an old rhythm and blues song, um, round there was a time when I listened to this local rhythm and blues show all the time in Boston called Little Walter's Time Machine, and he had the greatest collection of records, not just the hits, but records by groups like the Schoolboys and the Young Tones and all these obscure ones, and one of them was a song called Lydia. I think it was by Louis Lyman and the Teen Chords, and I thought it was so cool. I must say, if you liked my version, check out the original <laughs> by Louis Lyman and the Teen Chords. Um, they, I just did my version of a song um, from them. And thank you so much for enjoying uh, the one we did. And if you like that one, you'll love <laughs> Louis Lyman and the Teen Chords. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, well, that that's all our, our phone callers. There's a couple online if you well, want to take them. Let's take fast, those two, and then uh, no one call anymore because we got to run, but these two online we'll take. What do they say? Okay, uh... How important is performance in your artistry, and how has your relationship with the audience changed over the years? Also, who is your favorite comedian? Very good. Where does this come from? Uh, this comes from Daphne, but she doesn't say where she's from. Okay. Um, how has the relationship changed in the audience? When I started out as a, in my late teens, I used the audience as a sounding board and as a shoulder to cry on because I wanted to say, she cracked, but I won't. Like, and I wanted some emotional support from the audience. Well, she was sensitive and everything. I but she understood me, but she's gone now. And like, a, I'm here just eating health food alone, and I don't like it. And I was, so I had that kind of relationship with the audience where I actually would, I was sad, and I would say, I want to meet a girlfriend. <laughs> I want I walk alone with my heart in my hand. And it's because I was lonely and wanted the audience and music was my social passport. I met young women that way. I wasn't I didn't pretend it was anything else <laughs> than that. And I could socialize. I was an odd young man. <laughs> I wasn't always very popular and for good reason. But on stage, I was comfortable. What hasn't changed is, is that I'm still comfortable on stage. But what has changed is I'm now old enough to be everybody's grandfather. <laughs> and I don't pretend otherwise. And so there are certain things that the audience has changed very much. It's no longer... Um, I feel sort of that I can be there for them in a way that I couldn't be as a 19-year-old brat. <laughs> Because, how can I put it, I'm more calm inside and I'm less searching for certain things outside from the audience than I was. So I would say that's the difference. There's probably other differences, but that's the one that occurs to me. Well, I mean, certainly from all the, the callers talking about how important your music has been to them over the years, you can really tell that that's really been the effect you've had on them. Yeah, and, I'm, and that's what I'm here, like uh, with Tommy, we want to... Now that I'm past that age, um, of being a teenager, um, I we're there more or less really to do what we're doing on the phone now, not to know what's going to happen, to entertain sometimes, and to hopefully provide some music that's just plain beautiful and with good rhythm if we can. Did you want to take one more? Or did you want one to more? Okay, I mean, feel free to let me know whenever yeah, you guys the, the got last go. that last. One. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I sent you a letter a few months ago, and you responded. It totally made my year. Thank you for that. Uh, this is from Ashley. Uh, my question is, there's a huge difference in the messages from the Modern Lovers album to your later work. What prompted that difference? Was it just growing up or something more? And I guess that sort of ties it into was the just, other. It, the answer is what I said. It was one 
I was 19 and now I'm 71. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, the subject matter inspirations for this most recent album of yours. Somebody just wanted to know. Yeah. Um, and also wanted to know whether you ever collaborate on lyrics. Do I ever collaborate on lyrics? My One of my problems ever since I was four years old is I was one of those that the teachers would write from does not play well with others. <laughs> um, it's hard for me to... Um, I have... I'll, I'm not a opposed to collaborating with on lyrics. It's just that I usually end up doing stuff my bratty self. <laughs> um, I... What was the other part of the question? Um, uh, what what the subject matter inspirations were for for your most recent albums? They're right there, like everything in it. Nothing is there that isn't there, like it's right there, you know. The, uh, the subject matter is what it is. The beach, <laughs> you know. The cold, cold pizza. Cold pizza. It was the inspiration for that. Like um, we ordered cold pizza and it was there the next day. It's real straightforward with me. <laughs> Did someone ever? I'm 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 guessing based on uh, shameless shameless that somebody wants that's right peeled the sticker off of you. With me, a lot of times it's not too hard to guess what the inspiration is. And folks, thank you for calling. Tommy and me say goodbye, and we gotta go to Gambier, Ohio, to now, and we gotta get out of here. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us, Jonathan. It's been lots of fun. And Lily, thank you. Okay, I actually, I, as you walk out, I, I can put on the title track from your newest full-length album. Went to visit my inner house. And yep, and the like inspiration is right there. It's right there in the voice. I don't play hard to get. I tell you what the inspiration is. You can hear it. It's right, whatever the song is. <laughs> Thank you again for joining us, Jonathan and Tommy. Okay, see you later. Different clothes all wear. You might not recognize me there because it's different clothes. 
that I wear in my inner 